drive because I just won't go the right direction. So that's true. I'll the baby. It's true. Yep, it is. Very true. <laughs> so they always do this to me. So anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to you about fear. Anybody know anything about fear? Okay. So you've heard the acronym fear, false evidence appearing. Okay. Anybody had any fears in their life? Any fear of success? Anybody had a fear of success? Anybody had a fear of failure? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times we're afraid to step out on faith because we are afraid to fail. We, are, we have that fear. But what I'm going to tell you, talk to you about today is embracing your fears, okay? And it's an acronym that we've come up with. And it's F-E-A-R-S. The F in fears stands for failure. Do you know in business, when I, when I first started my business, and everything that I've been through, I've had to fail. You're going to have to fail before you're going to reach success. I thought bankruptcy. I got into real, yeah, I, I did. And, and, and the young lady said that, you know, you don't ever want to file bankruptcy. And you are absolutely right, but that was the best thing in the world for me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. When I went into the bankruptcy court, the skies were gray. It was, it was gloomy. When I came out there, the sun was shining. The way the world was off my shoulder, I walked out like this. I'll just keep it real with you. That was a failure, but you have to use your failure to establish yourself to get to the next level. There's been many failures in my life. The difference between a person who is successful and a person who is a failure is a successful person falls and they get back up. The failure stays falling. So what are you going to do? You're going to fail 1, 2, 10, 20 times, and that's okay. The difference is you've got to get back up. The E in, the, in fears is you might be embarrassed sometimes. Tanasha talked about, have, have, has people, to, have you told people what you're going to do, and they're like, why are you doing that? Sometimes you may have to go out and look like a fool. You know, I, I, when I was young, and I got my real estate license, I was 26, and I didn't have a good car, I didn't have good clothes, I had ambition to be successful. And I was out there showing houses in a raggedy A car, and my clients had to hold my door closed <laughs> while I was driving. And what that did for me but is why, it, why did they have to hold it? Because it kept flying open. <laughs> <laughs> and I was embarrassed. <laughs> but I was more so ambitious. You know, for me, that was my hunger. I was hungry for success because I had her, and she was a baby. And we had just moved and we were young and, and it was like, it was, it was do or die. You know, I could not let that stop me. It made me more hungry, it made me have better service. It made me want to do better for my clients because I knew that success was on the other side if I just kept going. Yes. A, you gotta put all your cards on the table. When I left my corporate job, I was like 25, 23 to 25 making $75,000 a year in the Silicon Valley. I don't have a, a, a college degree, I got a PhD now. A public high school diploma. <laughs> I don't have a degree, but I've always been a hustler. And so I, I use, utilize, like uh, uh, Sheila said, I utilize my jobs as my education. And so I learned as much as I could. And I, I implement all that stuff in my business today, everything I learned back then. But when I left HP, in fact, um, I was getting my real estate license. And when I had bought, bought, bought our house, I was 23. We got married when I was 23. I got 22, I got married. 23 had her, 23 bought our first house. And so I got intrigued with real estate. I said, I want to get my real estate license and do it on the side like everybody says. You really can't do real estate on the side that, that well. Tanasha is an exception. She did it on the side and she became hugely successful. So I started looking, you know, talking to different brokers because I was thinking about quitting my job at HP and at Cisco Systems. And I started talking to brokers and they were like, you do not want to quit your job at HP because you're not going to be successful doing this. They looked at me, this little black girl, you know, thinking that I wasn't going to do nothing. So it kind of discouraged me, and I slowed down, but I was like, okay, but I, I, still, I still had a hunger for it. And so, you know, the, the, the opportunity presented itself. I got laid off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so that, for me, again, some people might think that's a failure. It's not a failure. It is a setback for a setup for a comeback, okay? So I utilized that to say, okay, this is my opportunity because I was living in Stockton. I was commuting to Palo Alto. I had this new baby. I had this new husband. I had this new home that I was not able to enjoy. And it was a miserable, miserable life. And so I said, I, this has to work. We've got to put all our cards on the table. Me and my husband had a discussion. He said, we, we, I was already going to get laid off, have a nice little settings package. He said, you know what, we're going to just, I'm going to work. 
and we're going to we gonna do you, we're going to put all our cards on you, and you're going to go out there and you're going to be wildly successful. So my last day of work, I go to work, and I'm like, yeah, my last day, I'm going to be 17. You know, I can't. I'm home, like, baby, I'm grown, we're about to do this. He was like, I got laid off today. Yo. <laughs> so that was a setback, you know, that was a failure, but oh well, you know what he said? He said, I'm going to go get a job, and I'm going to support you and support us, and we're going to make it happen anyway. He goes, and he had a nice job, good benefits and everything. Had to go get a minimum wage job. We had to hold it down. We had a mortgage to pay. We had to do what we had to do. I didn't make money in the first six months of selling real estate, because, you know, it takes a little bit of time. But I hustled. Had no money coming in, but I had to pay money going out. Because if you got a business, you got to invest in your business. No money coming in. I still I have the same spreadsheet that I've had since 2002. You can see January, no money in. <laughs> money going out, advertisement. February, no money coming in. Money going out. All the way till June. And June, it started paying off, and I made $70,000 that year. And I've never made under $100,000 ever, except for the first year of real estate, okay? Because you have to invest in yourself. You've got to put all your cards on the table. For me, there's no plan Bs. I just had to jump right in there and just do it, like Nike says. The R in uh, fears is you've got to be willing to take risks. Some people are scared to cross the street because they're afraid to get hit by a car. I will put that little girl on my back, roll across the freeway with, with some skates on to get to the other side if that means success is on the other side. You know what I'm saying? You've got to be willing to take those risks. You've got to be willing to do whatever is necessary. Success sometimes is right around the corner, and you right there, and you turn around, because you don't come quick enough. You're afraid to take that risk. You right on the edge, ready to jump off, thinking you're gonna fall, but you might fly if you actually jump. Don't be afraid to take the risk. And the S in fears, <laughs> they be teasing me on fears. The Bible says that the S in fears, <laughs> I hate them, is sleepless nights. Successful people, extraordinary people, do not keep regular business hours. If you want to be successful, you ain't gonna work no eight to five. Well, You gonna work eight to eight. And it, I mean, it's just what it is. And even at this stage, like last week, I was I went to the office at six. I didn't leave till seven thirty. I still have four children. She's my oldest. I have three boys, younger boys, and I still got to come home. And the, and the great thing is, my husband, he supports me. And so, if you're gonna have a partner in this life, you got to have somebody that's gonna support you in your dreams. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yes. divorce for nobody but if your spouse or your significant other is not there to support you you might have to rethink that thing <laughs> you might just have to drop some dead weight like Sheila did once you drop the dead weight the blessings will start flowing <laughs> when I let go of it, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's real. <laughs> Let go. What was no longer good for me, things started to happen in my life. Uh -huh. Let me tell you. Uh -huh. So when she says you got to drop the dead weight, listen uh -huh. to her. Because the best thing that could ever happen to you will happen to you. So I will tell you, so do, 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 real quick, because you know, we only got so much time. So what she's talking about is during that worst year ever, I found out that the husband of 20 years had not only cheated, but had a baby by someone else. I didn't focus on that. Right. I focused on what I was going to do next in my life. So when I got rid of some things that were no longer good, I got rid of him too, and I got rid of the house that we had, I got rid of the furniture, and I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. And then within, uh, I don't want to say how exactly how long, but I'm at the Paul, bed. stand up. Paul, stand up. Stand up, brother. Go. Bless you. Yes. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, so good things do come when you start to get rid of the bad things in your life. Okay, you know, that's, that's good. But that, so we gotta go ahead. Oh, we're gonna run out of time. So, so I'm sorry. So you do. You definitely need somebody that's gonna help you. But the sleepless nights. Successful people do not keep normal business hours. When I first got into real estate, I was up to the wee hours of the morning looking for programs that, are, that help people like me. 
I was up when everybody else in the house was asleep. When I decided to start my business, Catalyst Real Estate Professionals, nobody knew what I was doing. I was up in the wee hours of the morning, trying to create my infrastructure, creating my corporation, doing everything, doing my research, doing everything I needed to do. I still am up. In fact, I'm up at three or four in the morning, I'm texting them, and they up. And we're the same <laughs> Right. This one right here, five o'clock. Responded to a text from yesterday. I was like, and then I got a text her right back. She's like, what you doing up? You woke me up. <laughs> so anyways, but we're always working, and we're always collaborating, and you're not gonna be able to keep normal, no, normal business hours. It just is what it is. You have to be willing to invest in you if you want to be successful. That is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. Yes. And you have to figure out, if you want success, which side you're gonna be on. Are you gonna be ordinary? Or are you going to be extraordinary? <laughs> Thank you so much.